one of the things you have to do as a professional developer is be able to learn things on your own. In fact, one of the key aspects of the job of a professional coder developer is your ability to learn things on your own. When you become a much more mature developer, you stop thinking in terms of, I am a Java coder. I am a React developer. I am a Node developer. You start thinking in terms of, I'm a developer, and I'm going to use whatever technologies I need to use to get this job done. There's no perfect language. There's no perfect framework. They all have their pros and cons. And oftentimes, the choice of the technology comes down to personal taste, invested infrastructure in the business. Let me unpack that because people may not understand that. So if you go work for a company and they may have invested a huge amount of time and effort into some application that is developed with PHP. And you think that PHP is no good and you think you should do it in JavaScript or you think you should do it in Django or Python, you, whatever, whatever your choice happens to be. And in certain circumstances, yes, Node could be better than PHP in certain circumstances and vice versa. Java could be better in certain circumstances. But at the end of the day, if you have a business that's already invested huge amounts of money and they have an infrastructure in PHP, as an example, they're not going to want to switch off. That doesn't make any business sense, and it will make their organizational structure more brittle by having disparate pieces of technology involved in the process. So anyway, in this video, using MySQI and PHP PDO as the example, I want to show people who've done foundation training, they're just starting to get into the world of coding as a professional, not as a tutorial master, as a professional. You're just learning your first job, maybe you're, 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 you've just started, or you're about to start your first job, whether you're freelancing or whatnot. I want to give you some ideas about some realities of the development world and how to search for things, some places you might want to go. So I'm going to use PHP PDO and MySQL, MySQL I, which are extensions in PHP that allow you to connect to databases. I'm going to compare some things about them and show you how to look at them. So let's just take a look. Boom. So here we go. So one of the things developers have as a tremendous advantage today is the massive amount of information out there in terms of uh, well everything. So there's just so much out there. There's a plethora of information for people who have some decent knowledge in, in anything. So let me just get that window in place here. Yeah, so if you are somebody who has skills as a developer, there's literally unlimited um, information out there you can gather, whether, whether it be through YouTube videos or just going to the documentation. What I teach people, you learn your foundations really well, and then you don't really need any other courses. You don't need other schools. You can just go to documentation and learn what you need to learn. So let me give you an example. So I go to php.net and I go to the manual here. And um, I'm just choosing PHP because it's whatever. So I go to PHP and there's two a APIs that they have, two extensions that allow PHP developers to connect to databases. Now you have the MySQLi uh, extension and you have the PHP PDO. Now, depending on which programmer you talk to, they're going to say, well, oh, this one's better than the other. So for example, my course, uh, when I, I've been teaching people how to code since the early 2000s. So in my earlier courses, I taught my SQL, which is the first extension they used in PHP. And this only connects to my SQL, the database, my SQL. So uh, that has now been uh, removed from PHP 7. Can't use it. It was deprecated, I think, at 5. We're at 8 as I record this. So MySQL I has some significant advantages over MySQL. Things like prepared statements. Uh, I think there's improvement in terms of speed. And I think some security issues. It's been a while. Anyhow, so here's MySQL I. Now let's look at MySQL I syntax and code to do a basic connection, select operation. 
and then to uh, fetch that record set and to display it to the individual. So you have MySQLi, extension number one, and you got PHP PDO. So let's look at, you have your connection string up here. So the connection string for PDO is a little bit different than it is for MySQLi, but let's say you did my course where I teach MySQLi basics. I don't believe I teach PDO. I may point to it, may talk about it, but I don't think I teach it, but you know what? Uh, if you know this and you understand this, for you to understand this on your own, it doesn't take a lot of effort, right? It's pretty easy. Oh, look, here's a connection string. In fact, all you have to do is go to, go to Google and you type in PHP PDO connection string. And boom, you're going to get a result. And if you know MySQLi, it's really easy to learn PDO, right? It literally takes you uh, about 10 seconds. So here's your connection string. Oh, here's your, your, uh, your query. In this case, they're using a select statement. It looks pretty much the same, right? It's pretty uh, almost identical. Then you got your result set. You're fetching the collection of records pulled from the database. This is how you do it. This is the syntax for PDO, and this is syntax, syntax for MySQLi. Again, pretty similar. There's a few little things that's going on here with PDO. Uh, PDO, its advantage over MySQLi is that it connects to multiple databases as opposed to one. So the idea there, if ever, which will never happen by the way, but if ever you write your app and you decide to switch from one database to another, as long as PDL supports and it supports many of them, I don't know how many now, it could be 10, it could be 20, I'm not sure what it is, then you don't have to change any of your database access code if using PDL, right? You just point to the new database, you can go from MySQL to Postgre as an example, and you don't have to change anything because PDO is an abstraction layer, meaning it's a layer of code that, allow, that does the translations for you. Whereas with MySQLi, it only connects to MySQL. That's it. Now, the thing is, a little reality, I've been coding since the 90s. I have never seen, I have never seen production code move from database A to B. It just never happens. It's such a rare event. Uh, when you do that kind of thing, it's massive changes are being done beyond um, just your database access layer. So the advantage of being able to switch off uh, databases that PDO provides, I think it's kind of a, it's a really esoteric, strange bird of an advantage, you know? So I wouldn't be so, um, uh, I wouldn't care too much about that. So as we can see here on the PHP page, they actually give you a comparison of both uh, extensions. So the overall extension, excuse me, the overall performance of both extensions is considered to be about the same, although the performance of the extension contributes only a, two, only a fraction of the total runtime of a PHP web request, often the impact is as low as 0.1%. Yeah, so we can see PHP, the S, MySQLi, PDO, uh, eight and PHP seven and eight support, uh, both, the, both in active development, uh, recommend for new products. They both have OOP interface. Uh, MySQLi has a procedure interface, which I wouldn't use. I would always stick to the OOP interface. Although some people would debate that of course. Oh, it supports non-blocking and synchronous queries. So that would suggest a, a performance advantage with MySQLi. Again, for most projects, this is probably not going to be much of an issue. Nobody's, most people are not going to be working on the next Facebook. Server-side prepared statements, that's good. Client-side prepared statement, that's interesting. That's interesting for PDO. We can go on for hours about this, but what I wanted to show you is that once you understand the concepts with MySQLi, for you to pivot to PDO is really a non-issue. Another thing you can do is you can just go to the Google and you go, should you use PHP PDO versus MySQLi? So we got some results, W3 schools, good side, I think. Uh, both MySQL and I and PDO have their advantages. PDO will work on 12 different databases. There's the answer, 12. Whereas MySQL I will only work with MySQL database. So if you have to switch your project to use another database, which will never happen, almost never happens, PDO makes the process easy. Both are object-oriented. Um, anyway, so you got that. So the point is, 
without having to take a course, as long as you know your basics of database access with MySQLi, you can find all the other information you need as a developer very, very, very quickly. So it's PHP, PDO, more secure. There's no difference in security. So exactly. So anyway, we can go on. And even, like, so they give an example here where they break down things. Again, the point of this video is not really about PDO and MySQLi. It's to show you how you can use the web once you have basic knowledge to fill in any gaps that you need. So they execute their uh, database query here, and they echo out the uh, result, which is, is the result set using HTML entities method or function. So what's that? Ah, you just type in HTML entities. Ah, there you go. It gives you a nice breakdown. Tells you what it does. Ah, that's cool. You know, it gives you all the details. Again, don't need a course, right? And if you want, you just go to a site like the uh, W3C, HTML entities, the function. So it's a function. You click to try it yourself, or it did. And it actually shows you exactly what happens here, right? It basically uh, converts the characters into entities often used to prevent browsers from using as an HTML element. So if we view source, view selection source. There you go. It uh, creates these entity elements, right? Boom, boom. So this way, the code is not, this is not interpreted as HTML, it's interpreted as uh, plain text by the uh, browser. Bang, bang, bang. That's why we got that. So you can you can insert all kinds of different strings, HTML code in here, and the HTML the HTML entities will be sure. Like I'll give you an example. So let me go um, equals Ruby. All right, space run. Boom. Oh, that's not good. There we go. So this is not interpreted as code. It's just uh, displayed as uh, plain text. All right, there you go. So to get back to the point of the video, if you are a pro developer, if you are a pro developer, you have to be able to navigate the web, Google, Stack Overflow, and other sites that are relevant for the technology you'll be working on. So if you're going to be working on iOS, You'd have to go to the Apple development resources. So what to take away from the video is that as a professional developer, you have to get used to being able to find little answers like this. Again, once you know your fundamentals well enough, you can learn new stuff and pivot very quickly. So in my courses, I just teach the fundamentals, a couple of basic CRUD uh, projects, and that's pretty much it. After that, my students are able to do very well as developers and get the job done.